Hey guys, we're doing chapter five. Yay. Okay. So we've done all these. Chapter four is on the quiz. This one, I think some classes we did this together, but um, I'm not sure in, in period three. So let's go ahead and do it. It says, survey of 84 randomly selected military officers were conducted to determine whether or not they participated in high school athletics. The two-way table shows the number of officers by varsity status. All right. Which of the following would describe the relationship between these? So we studied this before to determine if there's an association. Again, we said if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B, which is also equal to probability of A given not B, if all those end up being equal, then you have to say that there's no association. So what does that mean? Well, remember we said if, um, if a fifth of people in class have green eyes, that is um, one out of five, but let's say there's 20 people in class. That means that um, there were four out of a total of 20. Well, there would be no association if the probability of green eyes given a girl, let's say there was a total of 15 girls in class and three of them had green eyes, then notice this is the same decimal, right? One fifth. And if that's equal to the probability of green eyes given that you're a boy, let's say that's one out of five. Notice that's the same. So whether I know you're a girl or a boy, the likelihood of green eyes still stays the same. Using this same analogy, we are gonna figure out if there's an association between being in the um, which armed forces and whether or not you have varsity athletes. So we look at this here, we say, Given that you're in the Navy, the probability, given that you're in the Navy, so that's uh, given you're in the Navy, that's 48. What's the likelihood you're in varsity sports? That's 32. Now let's ask the question, well, what's the probability you're in varsity sports given that you're not in the Navy, which is uh, the Air Force, right? So I'm, I'm taking a look at these two ratios and saying, deciding if they're the same. So here, it looks like out of the 36 we talked to in the Air Force, 24. And we can see that if um, it's probability of varsity, just in general, that's this 56 out of 84. So we're going to turn each of these into a decimal and see if they're equal to the same decimal. So 32 divided by 48 is the decimal point six repeating. 24 divided by 36 is the decimal point six repeating. 56 divided by 84 is the decimal point six repeating. So this is like our example with green eyes. Uh, it looks like two thirds or two out of every three people in the Navy and two out of every three people in the Air Force and two out of every three people surveyed. So we must say that there is not an association. So question number 10. We pick C because there appears to be no association since the proportion um, is equal to both. That is the same proportion. All right. Oh, question number nine. Question number nine says, DeAndre and Claire are both going for a Chinese buffet. Based on their previous visits, the probability of them getting the number of plates is as follows. So we notice that this adds up to one and this other adds up to one, right? Assuming DeAndre and Claire are independent, what is the probability they will eat six plates of food? Okay. So that is the only way for them to eat six plates of food is three and three. Now, this would have been a much harder question 
if they asked um, a combination. So if DeAndre only happened to eat one plate of food, but Claire ate one plate of food, that's a total of two plates. Total of three, total of four, total of three, total of four, total of five, total of four, five, and six. There's only one way for there to be six plates of food, and that's for DeAndre and Claire to both have three. So we can actually multiply these, right? The probability that DeAndre had three and the probability, um, we can multiply it by the probability that Claire had three. So what is the probability that DeAndre had three? That's 0.7. Multiply that by the probability, 0.1, 0 0.07. So our answer here is B. This follows the probability that we did in chapter five. You could also think of it as our probability tree, if you remember that. Remember as we um, go from the first level of tree to the next level, we multiply these probabilities across. And in the same way, we use that multiplication rule. Question, what's our next question? We see question number 20, a carnival game requires for you to make three baskets in a row. All right, so you have to make one and then another one and then another one in order for you to win. Andre is a basketball player who normally makes 80% of his shots. So the probability of making one is 80%. But because of the trick rim on a carnival game, he can only make 60%. So, in fact, this is a distractor, right? He can only make 60. Now it says, assuming successive shots, which means in a row, are independent, what's the probability Andre wins? So for Andre to win, he needs to make three in a row. All right, so the probability of make is 0.6 times the probability of make, which is 0.6, times the probability of make was 0.6. Um, when we take 0 0.6 times 0.6 times 0.6, we get 0.216. So 21% of the time or so, He'll make three in a row. All right, we're cruising right along with our practice test here. Looks like we did question number 36, so we gotta do number 35. Sally realizes all of her professors are gonna give an exam of some kind in the half week that leads up to Thanksgiving break. If Sally takes four classes and each class is equally likely to take place on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday before the break, so the probability that it lands on Monday would just be one out of three because it equally likely to occur on any given day. The probability of Tuesday would be one out of three and the probability of Wednesday is one out of three, right? What is the probability Sally has all four exams on one day? Now we talk about ways. Um, I have to add this up because the, what's the probability that all four are on one day? I need to add those up, okay? So because probability of all on one day could be the probability of all on Monday or the probability that they're all on Tuesday or the probability that they're all on Wednesday, Right? Notice those are mutually exclusive events. They either all happen Monday or they could also all happen Tuesday or they could all happen Wednesday. So we can add up those events. We don't have any overlaps. 
So um, what would be all on Monday? That's one third and times one third times another one third. And the fourth one has to happen. There's four classes in total. So there's, um, that would be the probability that they're all on Monday. And this would also be the same thing, right? And this would also be the same thing. So we have three of the same thing. So this is what the notation would look like. Um, and sometimes the question actually lists the notation. You don't have to solve it. We're gonna solve it. So what is one third to the power of four? So one divided by three. Divide by three, divide by three, divide by three. Okay, times three, we get C. And again, we think about there were three ways for them all to land on one day. They either all land on Monday, all land on Tuesday, or all land on Wednesday. All right, I think that's it for chapter five. Thanks for joining us. Take care.